is the president of the American Council on Science and Health. She disputes the reports at the uh, of these findings. She's joining us now from New York. Dr. Jennifer Lowry, a medical toxicologist at Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, supports the panel's report. Uh, all right, so good to see both of you. Uh, parents uh, may be rather shocked to hear what Dr. Gupta brought up in uh, this report and that the idea of pre-polluted babies, uh, Dr. Lowry, uh, is alarming. What do you see in the patients that uh, you examine? Well, right now, I actually, I mean, babies are born, um, you know, normal. They don't have any um, indication that they've had the exposures before. Um, but what we don't know is what the impact is of having those 200 chemicals or plus or minus uh, that number um, in patients so that we don't know how they're going to develop, what kind of health effects they're going to have later on in life. So uh, are you convinced then when there are some reports some experts who do say just as we heard dr sanjay gupta that there may be something like 200 chemicals in the umbilical cord so that the babies have been uh predisposed they have been exposed to all of these pollutants do you buy that um yeah i do even um, though you, you actually, say you haven't seen the evidence you do I haven't buy seen the well we know well we know that the chemicals are there um, the CDC has released a number of different reports that have have made that same statement um, in patients or in uh, people throughout the United States they have found numerous chemicals including phthalates BPA different pesticides different metals um, in us just because that's what we're exposed to on a daily basis there doesn't you know making the leap from a, a, a woman who's pregnant of course it's going to get into the placenta and then obviously into the child mm -hmm. What this report actually states, though, is we don't know what the effect is going to be on on our on our children, and we need to do a lot more research to determine what effect it really does have. Okay, Dr. Wheeling, you've been uh, patient as you've been watching, and you're nodding your head, no, no, no. What part do you disagree with, if not all? Well, everything. Everything. Uh, I was really shocked by the president's panel on cancer. It completely distorts what we know about the causation of human cancer. You know, there's a, there's this science called epidemiology. And epidemiologists actually have studied for years the causes of human cancer, and uh, the report does not even go into them in any depth. Instead, it concentrates on the so-called chemicals in our life. You know, I refer to this as a national problem of chemophobia, uh, the fear of chemicals. Uh, it's, it's really more of a, an emotional, uh, psychiatric problem, which has no basis whatsoever, in fact. You say the babies are pre-polluted, you can find chemicals in the placenta. You can find anything in anything, in blood, in urine, whatever biomonitoring you do. The fact is the mere, mere finding of this chemical does not mean it has any adverse health effect. So I think, and, and as a matter of fact, all so mainstream... So you're saying just because there may be chemicals, they may not all be bad chemicals, they may not cause harm, you're not necessarily wanting to dispute that there is chemical exposure, but that not all of it means a detriment to your health. Life is chemicals. Everything is made of chemicals, natural or synthetic. You know, this is a, an absurd kind of uh, argument to make that you fear chemicals. And by the way, I'd like to say that in reaction to the president's panel, all mainstream public health groups like the American Cancer Society have come out and say, this is terribly distorted. We're, we're pointing people in the wrong direction. We know the causes of human cancer and we shouldn't be distracted by these uh, bogus risks. Okay, well, we're not done talking to you all. I'm, I want to uh, talk to you again. In fact, uh, when we come back, I want to uh, read a portion of the panel's finding and get your reaction on that when we come right back. We're going to take a short break for now. We'll resume our conversation with Dr. Whelan and Dr. Lowry. All right, we're back with a discussion about the possible links between cancers and toxins in food and water, according uh, to some findings uh, from the Presidential Cancer uh, panel. Back with us now, Dr. Elizabeth Whalen and Dr. Jennifer Lowry. Uh, we've been talking about this recent report from uh, the panel, uh, which is warning Americans, especially children, about the high risks, according to this panel, from chemicals in food, water, and the environment. And two doctors here with uh, completely different views on whether this actually merits such an argument. If, if there are chemicals that are influencing our health or whether these chemicals just exist and don't influence our health. Um, so Dr. Uh, Whelan and Dr. Lowry, uh, this is a portion of what this presidential panel is saying. 
The panel urges you most strongly to use the power of your office uh, to remove the carcinogens and other toxins from our food, water, and air that needlessly increase health care costs, cripple our productivity, and devastate American uh, lives. Uh, this is the panel's letter being sent to uh, the president. Dr. Uh, Whelan, you were saying it's difficult to know how influential any of these chemicals are, so what do you say about that statement? Actually, it's not difficult to know. We know that everything is made of chemicals, and if you look at natural foods, uh, then you'll find that many of them have uh, cancer-causing effects. I mean, they're natural, they're there, they're in your meals every day, and they have no effect whatsoever. Uh, you know, I think this is a complete distortion of the of our intent to try to reduce so, the, the total cancer. I guess cancer I, I don't in the know if I States. could interrupt you. I guess you know, if there's no effect, then what's the explanation for? Uh, the cancer rates. If we're going to focus on cancer and that being uh, one of the things that allegedly is being linked to all these uh, chemicals and toxins, if if we're saying that chemicals don't have any bearing on our health and we still don't really know the root of various cancers, how do you definitively defend that? First of all, we do know the root of many cancers. We know that 35 percent of our cancer deaths every year in America are caused by exposure to cigarette smoking. You know, a growing portion of our cancers are related to obesity. Um, excess ex exposure to sunlight, for example, is a very serious problem. Exposure to chemicals, now there's an exception here. Mm -hmm. If you are working in a, an occupational setting where you're exposed to high doses of uh, vinyl chloride, asbestos, beta naphthalene, whatever, which is, by the way, very improbable mm -hmm. in this day and age, that they have caused cancer, but these these trace okay. levels of cancer of, of chemicals, yeah. which are in natural as well as synthetic huh. products, is, is a non-issue. Okay, Dr. Lowry, based on what you're seeing in patients, particularly young people, uh, what would be your argument to Dr. Whelan here? Because I, I saw you grimacing and shaking your head a number of times, like, no, no, no. What, what are you in disagreement with? Well, my disagreement is that we don't know. There are so many different chemicals that we don't have any research on that says one way or the other whether they cause cancer or any health effects. We know that there are a number of different environmental exposures that have caused health effects, lead, mercury, um, a number of different triggers obviously that cause asthma. So the environment plays a huge role in health. Um, and specifically in regard to cancer, we know that in third world countries, for example, when we bring in our chemicals, um, either arsenic or even in our own country when they're exposed to benzene for long periods of time and not know about it, um, that they do cause cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know what the small effects, the small amount of, of environmental chemicals, either natural or manufactured, have in our body, but that's what the report huh. says. The report says we need to find out what happens with the, um, these chemicals, either um, chemicals by themselves or chemicals actually that are in a mixture, and we, have, we don't know what's going on within our bodies when we get exposed to them. All right, something tells me it's going to take a little time before there's common ground um, from you two's perspectives on this, too. Dr. Whelan, it looks like you had something to say real quick. Uh, five seconds or less. Well, <laughs> I, I, would, I would say that we should pay attention to the known causes of cancer and spend less time focusing on the hypothetical ones because it diverts us from good health. All right, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Whelan, Dr. Jennifer Lowry, thanks to both of you for joining us on what is very difficult uh, a subject and clearly extreme views um, from all ends, not just involving you two, but many, and that's why there is this kind of a panel uh, that has come about. All right, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you very much.